All right, I've got a relatively quick tutorial for you guys. And this one is just going to be focusing on the face area and getting an instance on points to scale whatever you put on there according to the face area size. Okay, so very easy. Let's jump right in. All right, so I'm just going to jump over here and I'll just throw in pretty much any mesh. To throw in a cube. I'll go ahead and put in a new geometry nodes. I'm using Blender 3.6.2. And we want to get a mesh to points node and instance on points. All right. And then I'm going to join the original geometry back up so we can visualize everything as we go. Looks good. Can okay, start off nice here. Make a little room, the mesh to points and everything else. Now, because we turn this into points and we instance, and I'm actually going to cut the original geo. And I want the UV sphere so that way I can control the segments and everything. And so I'll go to, let's see, like 12 for that and probably like six that looks good so that way it gives us a varying size of faces here if you will because we got triangles and we've got quads and so if you were to just go ahead and instance our cube you would see that it's going to pop up and let's just scale that size down a little bit i'll switch this from vertices faces and it's going to pop up and everything's the same size and even so up here all of these are clipping and we don't like that we don't want that so what we want to do is we want to scale this cube by the face area and in order to do that we're going to have to capture an attribute before it's turned into a point so let's go ahead and grab the capture attribute right there and I want this to be set. Yeah, float is good. And I'm just going to pull this out and grab the face area. So that way we can tell the capture attribute what we're trying to grab here. I'm grabbing the face area of each individual face. And I'm capturing it before it's turned into anything. So I can switch this. And we can switch it to face. And now if I just go ahead and plug this directly into the instance on points, it goes completely out of visibility, right? And the idea is we want this to use as much as possible of the space and then scale our instances down as we go. And if we have, let's say, one mesh on this one point and it's this size and then this one could vary just a little bit it might be a little bigger and then ultimately they're just going to go down in size as we go up and then the triangles should look something like that and these should get consecutively smaller as the face area is being red so let me remove all of that and if you ever lose this panel uh, this is the T panel. You just press T to get that back. So what we want to do is we want to get the square root of this. And in order to do that, we can just pull out from the attribute here. And we'll just type in square root. It's kind of uh, intuitive. So if you just begin to type something, it's going to grab that for you. And now if we just plug this in directly to the scale and our attribute is gathering the face area from before the mesh to points, and then distributing the cube on the instance points. Well, there you go. Now you've got the variance that we are looking for, and it's pretty clean. And you can't really control that, so I can just Shift D this and grab and multiply, and I can scale these up as such. Not too bad. They don't look real good like that, so I can pull out in a line, if I can get it right, 
align Euler uh, to vector rotation. And I can just snap these. There's, there's more to it. There's more complex ways of doing it, but just a rather quick way to do this. Uh, we can go ahead and capture another attribute. And this one can absolutely be a vector. And I want to grab the normals uh, before anything is changed into points as well. And so now I can take the attribute here and I'll just switch this one to points. And I can go ahead and plug this in to the align Euler vector directly into the vector. And that'll snap the, uh, the cube nice and square for us, pun intended. And I really don't like the fact that these are buried halfway through the mesh. So I'm going to fix that. And in order to do that, I'm going to lose the cube there. And I've got another cube for uh, dragging in. I just dropped in a forward slash. It's just a basic cube. Just drop one in. And as you drag and drop that in, it'll become an object info node. And then we can use that geometry and plug that into our instances. Now we'll have to reset our value down here, our scale. And then you can grab this and whatever, however you have it set up, but G and X. And then grab the relative here. G and X kind of move that out just a touch. That looks kind of cool. There we go. So that's how you do it, guys. No big deal. No mystery there. Uh, very easy to do. This radius doesn't do anything, but just grabbing the face area from a captured attribute and you're grabbing the normals to kind of fix this rotation, if you will. And just so we can uh, get another visualization, if we were to have just taken the normal and plugged that in uh, to the align, then you just get this funky stuff here. It's why you have to capture it uh, beforehand because that's just grabbing the normals as they are. And then when you've got the capture attribute plugged in, you get it to snap nicely. And it has random rotation to it, but there's uh, it's not that big of a deal. Cover in a future tutorial um, some other ways. I've even got a brick wall tutorial you could go through that'll show you how to align all that better. And don't forget with your meshed points, depending on how you want this to look, you can easily switch this to instance on the vertices, on the edges, which looks pretty cool. Faces, corners, see a lot of uh, funky business like clipping going on there. Uh, but the vertices actually works pretty nice. And then when you change anything over here, it's going to interpret that and automatically instance more for you or less depending on what you've done. Anyways, that's it. I really appreciate you guys watching. Smash that subscribe, smash that like button. I've got more updates coming. Uh, there's a lot of new nodes and functionality that are out and coming out. And 4.0 is getting pretty exciting. It's a little crashy right now. I don't know if you guys have been using 4.0, but um, a little crashy. But there you go. See you guys in the next one.